Here are some things you can try if you're gaining unwanted weight on a carnivore diet. Hi, I'm Jen. If you're new here, I am delighted to meet you. If you're not new, welcome back. Today we're gonna talk about what to do if you're gaining weight on a carnivore diet when your goal is really to lose weight. My first tip is really just don't sweat it at the beginning. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. And so if you have healing to do beyond just losing weight, maybe you have an autoimmune disorder or some kind of mental health issue or some chronic pain, if you have anything like that going on at all, just give it a little bit of time. I would suggest not trying to restrict fat or calories or anything like that at first. Just eat fatty meats that you enjoy, that you can afford, don't sweat the small stuff. Now you may gain a little bit of weight at first if your weight was sort of artificially lower before the diet because of maybe excessive dieting, not getting enough nutrients, that kind of thing. And now with this nutrient dense food and high fat foods, you're going to do a lot of good healing of your hormones and sort of your brain chemistry, but that may also come with a little bit of weight gain at first. That is not particularly unusual. One good thing about eating this way at first and not making a big deal about it is that it's going to help you get addicted from all the sugar and processed foods that you were eating before. You'll be fully satiated and you'll be getting plenty of nutrients and so it won't be as hard to avoid the sugary crap that if you're anything like me that you liked beforehand. And I definitely don't recommend restricting calories at any point if you're still dealing with disordered eating. So if you're having issues with overeating a lot, binge eating, binging and purging cycles, anything like that, don't restrict calories, you've got to get over that first. My second tip is to take at least a week and track your calories. You don't have to actually change anything, just track what you're eating so you have a baseline of how much fat, how much protein, and how many calories you're getting each day. You'll also be able to look back and kind of see the nutrient density of the foods that you're choosing, and that may help to shed some light on what's going on and what you can do to make things better. Once you've done that, my third tip is to use a TDEE calculator to figure out how many calories you're burning each day. In the description, I will put a website where you can go and do that for free. You just plug in some basic information like your gender, age, height, weight, and activity level, and it will do a series of calculations to tell you how many calories you need each day just to be alive, to breathe, to digest your food, and to do the activity that you typically do. Now that leads right into tip number four. Once you have that information from the TDEE calculator, you can then take away three to 500 calories per day to create a deficit and just that will allow you to lose about a pound a week just from changing your diet alone. And that's not going to be such a big deficit that you're gonna be really suffering, but it'll be big enough to start noticing some significant change. Tip number five may seem a little cliche, I'm sure you've heard this before, but just try to move more. Now that doesn't even mean working out at the gym. At this point, I'm just saying park further away from the grocery store, take the stairs when you have the opportunity, take your dog on an extra walk, anything to increase your activity because 100 calories here or there, if you're doing that throughout the day, that's gonna add up fast and increase that calorie deficit that you've already created by changing your diet just a tiny bit. Tip number six is one of my favorite, and that is to incorporate strength training. By increasing muscle mass, you will increase your basal metabolic rate. That means that you'll be burning more calories even when you're just sitting there doing nothing. You'll be burning more calories even in your sleep. So basically, it's a way to rev up your calorie burning engine, which is going to create a bigger deficit for you. It obviously also increases the size of your muscles, which is great, but that means that you have extra storage space for energy that you take in through your diet. So whether that energy comes from fat or carbs, your bigger muscles allow more storage space for that energy so it can get out of your bloodstream. If there's nowhere for it to go, then it can be deposited as fat on your body. So that's not what we want. Tip number seven is do your best to avoid snacking. If you're hungry, eat a meal. I think generally snacking is something that we do out of boredom or some other sort of emotional reason. And so those are calories that add up just as quickly as these calories we're trying to take away by parking farther away from the grocery store or increasing resistance training, all that. I mean, you can completely negate that just once a day by doing some extra snacking. So try not to do that. 
My eighth and final tip is maybe the most controversial in the carnivore community, and that is to prioritize protein. Now don't get me wrong, fat is essential. Fat is necessary for everybody, but certainly on a carnivore diet, it's very important. Fat is necessary for maintaining healthy hormones, and it also is needed for absorbing fat-soluble vitamins, such as A, D, E, and K, which are all imperative for muscle maintenance and building. However, it is protein that is responsible for responding to external stressors such as resistance training and doing that by breaking down into amino acids and laying down new muscle fibers. Basically protein is the bricks and mortar for muscle building. It seems that very high fat diets and maybe even moderate to low protein are sort of all the rage these days. And I've tried it and I've not had a ton of success for myself when it comes to losing weight and building muscle. So my question is when people go on a very high fat diet and they decrease protein drastically or when they do a fat fast and they literally eat nothing basically but fat for a day or multiple days, they often report having lost weight. But I'm wondering, are they losing muscle? Because that's not the kind of weight I want to lose. And it'd be nice if everyone could have a DEXA scan before and after to know for sure, but it's difficult to believe that they could be maintaining and certainly building muscle if they're not eating enough protein. And so that's bad by itself, but the other thing that's concerning is if you're decreasing your protein mass, you will also decrease your basal metabolic rate. So back to what we talked about before, at rest, you will be burning fewer calories. And that's certainly not what I want. Then you have to eat less and less to have a calorie deficit. Now, these are my opinions based on my own experience and my own knowledge with the biology degree and my own sort of research. So I understand that this advice does not necessarily apply to every single person. However, I think for many, many people, this can be useful information. So keep in mind though, that you still have to try different things and you kind of have to attract and adjust and do what works best for you. And I would be happy to hear if this exact type of method has worked for you or if there's something else that's worked much better, please let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe if you did. And I'd love for you to find me on Instagram. That's where I'm active the most. Every single day we can interact there. So check it out.